so glad that you decided to tune in today. Again, today is final exams, EMOAF Biblical Courses. We are going to be taking a final exam on the first six weeks of session one. There were exactly seven courses. Uh, but the seventh course was on a review for the final exam. So we're really going to be focusing on today. Uh, again, the final exam is going to persist on the, uh, on the focus of the first six weeks of Bible school. So I hope you are ready. Listen, we're going to have a great time. Don't be concerned as to whether you're going to get something right, something wrong. Don't be nervous. Nothing like that. It's not even, listen, this is not the place for any of that because the Holy Spirit is in this place. He loves us. He's with us. And this is him teaching us. Our teacher, amen, teaching his students, his disciples onto Jesus Christ. So let's take a moment. Let's pray before we officially get started on today's final exam. Praise you, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you in Jesus' name, Father. Father, we, we give you glory, Lord. Father, your name is glorious. You are holy. You are holy, 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 O oh Lord. Father, we praise you for this day that you've given us, Father. We thank you. Thank you for the study time at hand, for the test at hand. Father, we thank you that this is a time of teaching and learning, understanding, receiving the impartation of the Holy Spirit in these last days. Father, we receive it. We, we receive your instruction, O oh Lord. We receive your hand to teach us. Father, teach your children with an open heart. We ask this. We thank you for your continued wisdom, your favor, your anointing, and your Holy Spirit on us, in us, and leading us every step of the way. We give you glory, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Put this down just a tad bit. Such beautiful, anointed, instrumental worship music. I need thee every hour is the name of that beautiful worship rendition. Okay. The way today's final exams are going to go uh, are as follows. Uh, if we are going to give you uh, 45 questions. Uh, the last time we were in class, I said we would have final exams. It could be up to 100 questions. We're not going to do up to 100 or anywhere near 100, so that's good. 45 questions. And you would need a paper, a pen or a pencil, and have your Bible on hand. Uh, if you feel the need to search the scriptures, that's fine. It will be a timed test because of the time allotted to us for today's uh, school class. Um, please have on your paperwork, your name, today's date, and title the paper, final exam, course, excuse me, final exam, session one. Final exam, session one, be sure to put today's date, October 8th, 2015. Uh, our original schedule for the final exam was last Thursday. We did receive several requests to give a little bit more time because of work schedules uh, to, uh, to accommodate those who needed to catch up. So we went ahead, we honored that, uh, and it actually was good timing because we also run a broadcast outside of the live Bible classes, which is an end time Bible prophecy broadcast. And we got to air live the Netanyahu speech that took place on the same Thursday last week while he was at the United Nations during the 70th General Assembly. So it all worked out and hopefully you all had an opportunity to really study and just receive the, uh, the implanted word that is able to save your souls. Amen. So um, be sure to title it again, your name, today's date, final exam, session one, Emoaf Bible School. I am going to break down the final exam in six courses. And for each course has a list of questions. Uh, each course we titled it as we actually, you know, studied it and, and as it was taught. Um, 
I'm going to ask or I'm going to give you the final exam question and you have to answer it. Uh, it may include multiple choice. It may include a true or false. It may include a yes or no. And it may also include for you to fill in the blank or for you to give a complete sentence. So again, it is a timed test. I'm going to do my best not to go fast, too fast or too slow. So Lord, your grace is all over this. And um, I'm going to give you maybe another few seconds to get your stuff ready. And we are going to get started. This Holy Spirit inspired music, I need thee every hour, I believe will be a blessing during this test time. I don't want to put it up too loud. We want to, you know, we want to focus. But it'll be a blessing. Now, once we go over the entire 45 questions and you fill in the answer, on the other side of this board, we have the answers. So we will be going over each and every one of the answers in today's class. If you got an answer wrong, correct it. Um, this is not a matter of, oh, you have, you know, 30 out of 45 right. If you get an answer wrong, I need for you to correct it so that you'll know what the correct answer is, okay? Uh, with that, uh, it's a win-win situation because you, if you did get something incorrect or wrong, or even misspelled, then not only can you correct it, but then you can receive the, uh, the right answer and keep it. So, all right, students of the word, are you ready? Think I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's have a great time. You guys are gonna love this. We're gonna love it together. Number one, we're gonna start with the very first course, which has 10 questions. Number one. Number one, again, the first 10 questions regard, uh, is in reference to course one. Please, please don't use notes. We will go over the answers. We want to see how much you obtained for the first six weeks plus that seventh when we went over the final exams review. So put aside your notes. You have your word. If you really need to go to your word, that's fine. But put aside your notes. Put away anything that may be a distraction to you. And let's focus, okay? And I believe I know you're gonna do great. You guys are gonna do great. All right. So the first, again, the first 10 questions will consist of what we learned in course one. Number one. In course one, session one, we focused on the scripture, James chapter one, verse 22. Write what the scripture is. We're gonna repeat that again. In course one of session one, we focused on the scripture, James chapter one, verse 22. Write what the scripture is. All right, number two. The word doer in James chapter one, verse 22, is it A, Greek, 
or B, Hebrew? Again, question two. The word doer in James chapter 1 verse 2 is Greek or Hebrew? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Please answer. I'll repeat number two again. The word doer in James chapter 1 verse 22 is Greek or Hebrew? In this case, don't just write A or B. Please write A for Greek or B for Hebrew. <coughs> Excuse me. Number three. The Greek word for doer is A, phaiutis, or B, poetis. Again, number three. The Greek word for doer is A, fuetis, or B, poetis. In this case, you can answer either A or B. You don't have to write the word down. Number four, fear of man will leave you stagnant and will result in no fruit, true or false. I'll repeat it again. Fear of man will leave you stagnant and will result in no fruit, true or false. Number five, complete the following verse. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 reads, faith comes by hearing and hearing by, I'll repeat it again. Number five, number five is referencing Romans chapter 10 verse 17, fill in the blank or finish the verse. Faith cometh, faith comes or cometh by hearing and hearing by complete the verse. Number six. Being a doer of the word is works salvation, yes or no? I'll repeat that again, number six. Being a doer of the word, is it works salvation, yes or no? Number seven, testator. Testator represents the father or the believer. Testator. Does testator represent the father or believer? I'll repeat number seven again. Testator. Testator represents the father or the believer.
Number eight, executor. The executor represents the believer or the father. Executor, number eight. Executor represents the believer or the father. Pick one. You all are doing great. I just know you are. Number nine. In all you're getting, get understanding, is what Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 states. Understand is a verb and defined as a fill in the blank, defined as blank person present. Number nine, I'll repeat it again. In all you're getting, get understanding. Proverbs chapter four, verse seven reads, the word understand is a verb and defined as, fill in the blank, a blank person present. Understand is a verb and defined as blank person present. Number 10, being a hearer only is likened to the servant in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. What did the master call that particular servant? I'll repeat number 10 again. Being a hearer of the word and, and only being a hearer of the word only rather than being a doer as well is likened to the servant in Matthew chapter 25 verse 14 through 30. What did the master call that particular servant? There were three servants he left his talents with, two of which he called good and faithful. The third one is what we want to know. What the master called that particular servant. All right. I want to say congratulations for completing the first 10 questions of your final exam of course one. Now, please write on that same paper, skip a line and write course two. And we have another 10 questions on what we learned, what was taught in course two. Course two, we learned, uh, we expounded on the sin nature. Question one, key word studied was sin. Strong's Greek concordance number 266 defines sin as A, hamardia, or B, kleos. I'll repeat that again. The key word studied was sin in our course two sessions. According to the Strong's Greek Concordance, number 266, the word sin is defined as A, hamardia, or B, klaios. You can put A or B, and if you'd like to put the word next to it, that's fine. It's a Greek word for sin.
Number two, sin is defined as, here's multiple choice. Sin is defined as A, being on target, B, missing the mark, or C, acting bad. I'll repeat that again. Number two is multiple choice. You can put A, B, or C. Number two is sin is defined as A, being on target, B, missing the mark, or C, acting bad. Number three, Hamardia is the brand of sin that emphasizes its self-originated, self-empowered nature, true or false. I'll repeat that again. Number three, Hamardia. Hamardia is the brand of sin that emphasizes its self-originated, self-empowered nature, true or false. Number four, Hamaria is originated and empowered by God. True or false? I'll repeat that again. Number four, true or false, Hamaria is originated and empowered by God. True or false? Praise God. I know you all are doing so great. I'm just so, so happy that we get to do this. God is good. Number five. When did sin come in? Multiple choice. When did sin come in? A, when you had a bad thought. B, when people turned bad. C, when Adam and Eve hated the voice of the serpent, or D, all of the above? I'll repeat the question again. Number five, multiple choice. You can put A, B, C, or D. You don't have to write it out. Just put A, B, C, or D. Number five, when did sin originally come in? A, when you had a bad thought, B, when people turned bad. C, when Adam and Eve heeded the voice of the serpent. Or D, all of the above. Number six. Genesis chapter three, verse one through six shows us when sin came in. It describes, fill in the blank, fill in the blank. It describes, number one, the serpent was more blank. I'm actually gonna help you out a little bit with this one. I want you to fill in the blank. That's the letter C. That's a two-part question in number six, okay? So let me repeat that again. 
Number six, Genesis chapter three, verse one through six shows us when sin came in. It describes number one, the serpent was more blank than the beast of the field. And in all the beasts of the field, he was more blank. And that word that we're looking for begins with the letter C. Answer the word, or put the word down, put the answer down as to what the word is. It begins with the letter C. It's a two part question in number six. So again, number one, the serpent was more blank than all the beasts of the, of the garden. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, the second question of number 6 with regard to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, shows us also when sin came in that the serpent blank to Eve. The serpent blank to Eve it has to do with talking. That's all the hints I'm going to give you. I need both answers for number 6. Again, the first portion of number six, the answer. The serpent was more blank than all the beasts of the garden. And the second portion, the second part of the question of number six for the answer, the serpent blank to Eve had to do with talking. Number seven. Whenever you hear someone, anyone, Question the word of God to bring an opposite result. You know you are dealing with the cunningness of the serpent. True or false? I'll repeat it again. Number seven. Whenever you hear someone, anyone, question the word of God to bring an opposite result, you know you are dealing with the cunningness of of the serpent, true or false? Number eight, number eight. Give three examples, in this case, write. Write three examples of the serpent questioning God's word. Three examples of the serpent questioning God's word. Now this could be related to what is spoken of in the scriptures, or it can be related to what is taking place in today's society. Just give three examples of the serpent questioning God's word, whether it be through people, places, or things. Three examples. Give three examples. Number eight. We're still on number eight. Give three examples of the three examples of the serpent questioning God's word. In other words, did God really say? We really listed a large amount during this particular course as to the examples of how the serpent, the cunningness of the serpent, continues to even deceive to this very day God's word among the masses. Three examples.
Number nine. Number nine. The serpent sought to give man three things. The serpent sought to give man three things. If you remember, when we studied that particular, when we discussed this particular portion in course, in this, in this course, when we talked about the serpent sought to give man three things, what were those three things? It all began with its. The serpent sought to give man three things, fill in the blank. The serpent sought to give man its three things. The serpent sought to give man three things. It sought to give man its blank, its blank, and its blank. Fill in the blank. All right, number 10, number 10. <clears throat> ultimately, ultimately the serpent sought to destroy mankind, destroy the image of God and exalt himself as God, true or false. Now, I just wanna say for the record, the three things that we've just listed in number 10 is not the three answers for number nine. Those were completely different answers, so. But again, to focus on number 10, I'll repeat the question again. Ultimately, the serpent sought to destroy mankind, destroy the image of God, and exalt himself or itself as God, true or false. All right, we just completed the second course and answered 10 questions of that final exam, so excellent job. And now we are ready for course three. Course three. Now course three also has 10 questions. And in course three, we focused, our exegesis was on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil based on Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Are you ready? If you are, just say amen, beloved. By faith even, just say amen. <laughs> amen. You all are doing so good. And again, we will be going over the answers after we complete today's final exam, okay? Number one. Number one, did you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17? Yes or no? I'll ask the question again. Number one, did you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17? Yes or no? Number two, the Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden. This is multiple choice. Choose A or B, okay? I'm going to repeat the question again. The Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to A, tend and keep it, or B, buy and sell it. I'll repeat it again. Multiple choice, A or B. You could just simply put A or B. 
You don't have to write it out. The Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to A, tend and keep it, or B, buy and sell it. Number three, true or false? God gave a management position to man. True or false? God gave a management position to man. Number three, true or false? Number four, when God speaks, it is a command, a decree, a requirement, true or false? I'll repeat it again. Number four, when God speaks, it is a command, a decree, a requirement, true or false? Number five, his sayings are completion. They are wholeness. They are fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. Number five, here we're talking about the word of God. And I'll repeat it again. His sayings are completion. They are wholeness. They are Fill in the blank. What's the last word? It's a word. It's not a sentence. It's just a word to finish the sentence, to finish that statement. I'll say it one more time. Number five. His sayings are completion. They are wholeness. They are blank. Fill in the blank. Number six, Genesis chapter two, verse 16 reads, and the Lord God commanded the man. Commanded is defined in Strong's Concordance in the Hebraic transliteration as A, Lava, B, Kasoga, or C, Sava. I'll repeat number six again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 reads, And the Lord God commanded the man. The word commanded is defined in Strong's Concordance in the Hebraic transliteration as A, Lava, B, Kasoga, or C, Sava. You can simply put A, B, or C. If you want to write down the word, that'll be awesome. But A, B, or C would be just fine. <clears throat> Number seven. Number seven. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil denotes experiencing and living a life void and without God. True or false? I'll repeat it again. Number seven, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil denotes experiencing and living a life void and without God. True or false? Number eight, self-empowerment is a fruit of the spirit. True or false? 
I'll repeat it again. Number eight, self-empowerment is a fruit of the spirit, true or false. Number nine, before they ate, did Adam and Eve have a conscience of good and evil? Yes or no? I'll repeat that again. Number nine, before they ate, did Adam and Eve have a conscience of good and evil? Yes or no? Number 10, list six fruits from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you remember during this particular course, we actually drew an illustration of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we had a, a lot of branches sticking out and the fruit on those branches had several titles, several things. It's a fruit that comes from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We listed quite a few of them, name six of them. All right, that completes our final exam for course three. Congratulations. Now we start with course four. Course four has eight questions. And course four, we studied and expounded on the works of the flesh. So please write course four. And again, it will be eight questions. Are you ready? Number one, man is made up of three parts. Name the three parts. I'll repeat it again. Number one, course four. Man is made up of three parts. Name the three parts. If you remember, they were in accordance to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, and Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the three parts of man. Name them. Let me repeat that again. Again, number two, fill in the blank. As human beings, we live eternally as a blank. We have a blank and we dwell in a blank. I will help you out here a little bit and actually write out the sentence.
we have a blank and we dwell. A blank. I'll give you another, I'll give you a hint. It, it, it makes up the three parts of man. You just have to fill in, you have to fill in the blanks as to where each part of man goes into correctly. So again, number two, fill in the blank, course four, number two, as human beings, we live eternally as a blank, we have a blank, and we dwell in a blank. Fill in the blank. You don't have to write down the sentence, just fill it in in order. All right, number three, works of the flesh requires practice, consistency, and execution, true or false. Number three, I'll repeat it again. Works of the flesh requires practice, consistency, and execution, true or false. Number four, what must be renewed by the Holy Spirit? The body, the soul, or the spirit? I'll repeat that again. Number four, choose one. What must be renewed by the Holy Spirit? The body, the soul, or the spirit? What must be renewed by the Holy Spirit? Number five, choose one. What is brought under the subjection of the Holy Spirit? The body, the soul, or the spirit? I'll repeat that again, number five. What is brought under the subjection of the Holy Spirit? The body, the soul, or the spirit? Number six. What becomes born again? by the Holy Spirit, the body, the soul, or the spirit. I'm talking about the three parts of man. Pick one. For number six, what becomes born again, body, soul, or spirit? Number seven. Number seven reads Galatians chapter five, verse 24. Fill in the blank. Galatians chapter five, verse 24. Those who are Christ have blank the flesh. I kind of gave you, it was a two part answer. So I'll just leave it to be a one part answer. <laughs> Let me take that off here. Fill in the blank. Galatians chapter five, verse 24. Fill in the blank. Those who are Christ have blanked the flesh with its passions and desires. Those who are Christ's have blanked 
the flesh with its passions and desires. Fill in the blank. That's according to Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And number eight. Number eight reads, works of the flesh is practice in a person who is, multiple choice, A, B, or C. Works of the flesh is practiced in a person who is A, saved, B, filled with the Holy Spirit, or C, not born again. Let's repeat it again. Number eight. The works of the flesh is practice in a person who is A, not uh, who is A, saved, B, filled with the Holy Spirit, or C, not born again. You can simply put A, B, or C as your answer. The works of the flesh is practiced in a person who is A, saved, be filled with the Holy Spirit or see not born again. Moving right along. You all are doing fantastic. That completes our final exam for course four. Now we will go into course five. Course five is three questions. However, the three questions do require some writing. So please get a space. If you need to use a separate sheet of paper, that's fine. But be sure to write course five. Now, if you remember course five, we focused on part one of the redemption of Christ. The redemption of Christ. And in this particular course, our ex to Jesus was uh, on free from indwelling sin. We spoke on being free from indwelling sin. And so we will start course five, final exam, three questions. It will require some writing. You're going to do great. Question one. What is the redemption of Christ? What is the the redemption of Christ. In this case, you are defining, giving a definition of the redemption of Christ, what it means. What is the redemption of Christ? Please write your answer. give you about another minute or less. Number one, course five, what is the redemption of Christ? Write out what it means, how it's defined. What is the redemption of Christ? Number two, number two, the word redeem means A, to release, or B, to keep. You can simply put A or B on your answer for number two, redeem, 
The word redeem means A, to release, or B, to keep. Number three. Number three, who is Jesus Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? Now, here we gave you seven points in course five, and we are going to be going over those seven points. The way we're gonna do it, however, it's gonna be fill in the blank, okay? What we're looking for is titles only. We focused on titles and definition when we went over the courses. What I want in this final exam, when answering who is Jesus Christ, we're gonna name the seven points and you're gonna fill in the blank for the titles. Are you ready? So for question three, you can put, you can number it one through seven. Fill in the blank for each one. We're gonna start right now, number three. Who is Jesus Christ? The first title. Jesus is the blank God. Fill in the blank. Jesus is the blank God. We were very specific when we studied this course. Still focusing on number three, but now on number two for the title, who is Jesus Christ, the seven points. Number two, Jesus is the blank of the world. Fill in the blank. Jesus is the blank of the world. Number three. Number three of question three. Jesus is the blank. Now, this particular title of Jesus can be found in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 9. Jesus is the blank. Found in John, chapter 10, verse 9. Number four of question three. Jesus is the true blank. Fill in the blank. Jesus is the true blank. Number five of question three. Jesus is the blank shepherd. Jesus is the blank shepherd, fill in the blank. Number six of question three. Number six, Jesus is the blank and the life. Jesus is the blank and the life. And number seven of question three, Jesus is the way, the blank, and the blank. Fill in the two blanks on question on number seven of question three. Jesus is the way, the blank, and the blank. All right. That completes our final exam for course number five. We are down to our last course, certainly not least, course number six, which focused on the exegesis, part two, the redemption of Christ. So please go maybe skip a line and write course six. 
Now, course six consists of five questions. So we can say we have five more questions to go and we're done with the final exam. Immediately after, we will be checking the answers. All the answers are on the other side of this board. So let's get started on core six. Number one, are you ready? I know you are. Number one, name the three points what we have been redeemed from, what Christ has redeemed us from. Name the three points. Now, I'll help you out with this one a little bit. I'll write it out. You fill in the blank. Okay? You fill in the blank. There are three points. Christ redeemed us from one the blank of the law. Fill in the blank. Number two, Christ redeemed us from the blank of sin. I'll be more specific. The blank of our sin. Fill in the blank. And number three, the blank Christ redeemed us from the blank of sin. We focused on this on part two of the redemption of Christ, course six. Question number one is a three part question. Name the three points that we have been redeemed from, that Christ redeemed us from. Christ redeemed us from, number one, the blank of the law, number two, the blank of our sin, and number three, the blank of sin, fill in the blank. Please don't look at your notes. Try not to look at your notes. We will go over the answers. Just do your best. Do your best, my friends. Name the three points. What we have been redeemed from Christ. Redeemed us from, one, the blank of the law. You don't have to write down the sentences. I'm just simply looking for the word that fills in the blank. If you wrote them down, that's fine. But number two, the blank of our sin. And number three, the blank of sin. All right, number two. Number two, in course six, we asked the question, is redemption for all or a select few? And we spoke on two extremes that are in Christian circles today. Name the two extremes. There were two theologies, two doctrines, very specific titles. I'll give you a hint. The first doctrine that was an extreme to this question was that all will go to heaven no matter what. Name the title. And the second part of this question. Again, we spoke on two extremes. Name them. The second one focuses on limited atonement and that there is a pre-selection that only a few will be saved. I'm just, that's all the hints I'm gonna give you. I'm looking for the two extremes, those two specific doctrines. When we ask the question, is redemption for all or select few? We spoke and taught on two extremes, name them. Just looking for title.
All right. Number three. Number three, both extremes are error. We, 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 we discuss this, okay, on, in our core six. The two extremes you just more than likely gave as an answer. Uh, we taught that those extremes are both in error. What is the biblical answer to question number two? And again, the question was, is redemption for all or select few? What is the biblical answer according to the Bible? We gave you the book, the chapter, and the verse. All I'm looking for is the book, the chapter, and the verse. You want to write down the verse, that's fine. But all I'm looking for is the book, the chapter, and the verse as to the biblical answer as to is redemption for all or a select few. All right, number five, last, certainly not least, but this will officially complete our final exams. Are you ready? Number five, or yeah, where am I? Number, I said number five, I meant number four, but it's still the last, the last question of the final exams, and then we will be checking our answers. Number four, are you ready? Number four is a five-part answer. Number four focused on the results, the benefits, the blessings of our redemption. And we gave you five points, five points as to the results of our redemption, the benefits of our redemption, the blessing of our redemption. What I want you to do is complete the word that we gave you for each five points. Now, number four of this five part question, number four is it, it, it's, it's more of completing the sentence, okay? But it was still part of the five points, very important. So we'll touch on that, but we'll go one at a time for this last question, number four, five part answer. The results of our redemption, the benefits, the blessing of our redemption, complete the word. I will give you the definition, the meaning that we expounded on, and hopefully that'll help you, and I believe it will, complete the word. I started off spelling the words out, okay? Number one, complete the word. This word is a benefit, a blessing to our redemption in Christ. This word means the removal of our sin and guilt. Complete the word. It means the removal of our sin and guilt. Complete the word. It starts off EX, simply complete it. Please do not look at your notes. Number two of number four question, okay? Number two, complete the word. It starts off P-R-O. The meaning of this word means to the removal of God's wrath. So this particular word is also a result 
a benefit, a blessing of God's redemption towards us in Christ Jesus. This word means the removal of God's wrath, complete the word. It starts off P-R-O. Number three, the third point of question number four, the results of our redemption, the benefits, the blessing. Number three, fill in the rest of the word, fill in the blank. It starts off R-E. It means the removal of our alienation from God. This word means the removal of our alienation from God. Complete the word. Number four, another major benefit, the results of redemption of Christ. Number four, defeat of the blank, blank, blank. It's a three-part answer here, or really it's a completion of a sentence here. This is a benefit of our redemption, and it coincides with Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 14. He disarmed the rulers and authority and made an open show of them. He, this is part of it, defeat of the blank, blank, blank. Now, don't go looking at the scripture because it's not going to be word for word. But this was in our notes and in our final exam review. And number five, complete the word. It starts off S-U-B. This is a major benefit blessing of our redemption in Christ. He died in our place. Jesus died in our place. Jesus died in our place. Fill in the rest of the word. Wow. Well, that officially completes our final exam. Uh, give yourself a hand. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I know we have viewers who are tuning in. We have students that are tuning in. You probably haven't had a final exam in years. And uh, there's probably a few of you that have never had a final exam. So I congratulate you. The Lord is just beaming down on you. This is awesome. Again, give yourself a hand clap. We have students of all ages around the world that tune into our live Bible classes and our archived Bible classes. Many of them are not able to go to college. Many of them are young. Many of them are older. They haven't been in college. There are some of you that are college age. And so I'm just happy. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm, I bless you in Jesus' name. Let's check our answers. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's check our answers. And the way we're going to do this, the answers are on the other side of the board. As soon as I flip the board, you're going to be exposed to all the answers. But I want to ask that you do something for me. I want to ask that you um, try not to have your eyes check to see wh where you were at in course four to see if you got the answer right. Please follow me, please. I'm asking you this. Discipline yourselves right now during this time. I'm going to flip over the board. All the answers are there. Don't immediately gaze to see if you got what answer right. We're going to go over it step by step. If you happen to have missed one or if you got one incorrect, just correct it. 
That's the whole point of giving the answers, going over the answers right now. I want you to correct it. You need to correct it so that you can learn and, and, and keep the correct answer so that we can walk in it. Amen? Amen. So let's turn it over and uh, just go back to your course one, first question, and we will go over all the answers. These are the final exam answers. Let's go to course one first. Course one, number one. Number one is be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only. If you remember number one, I asked you, we focus on the scripture, James chapter one, verse 22. Write what the scripture is. This is the scripture. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. If you got that correct, give yourself five points. Number two, number two, I said is doer. The word doer in James chapter one, verse 22 is Greek or Hebrew. If you wrote Greek, congratulations, you got the right answer. Give yourself five points. Number three, number three, the Greek word for doer is A, phiutes, or B, poetes. If you answered B, poetes, you are correct. Give yourself five points. Number four, fear of man will leave you stagnant and will result in no fruit, true or false. The answer, true, absolutely. Fear of man is a horrific thing. It's, it's, a, it's, it's entrapment. And the Lord says it will leave you stagnant. It will result in no fruit. It's a snare. The fear of man is a snare. So the answer to that is true. Number five. According to Romans chapter 10 verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by fill in the blank, fill in, or fill in the rest of the scripture, the word of God. If you wrote the word of God, give yourself five points. Each answer you have correct, five points. Each answer you don't have correct, correct it. Don't give yourself points, but correct it. Put the right answer in, please. Number six. Is being a doer of the word works salvation? Yes or no? The answer is no. Of course is not work salvation. The Lord is clear. Be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only. That's not, oh, you're trying to get saved by your works. No, we're not. We are working the word because it works. <laughs> we, we are being doers of the word, not deceiving ourselves. Number seven. Number seven, testator represents the father or the believer. Number seven, father is the answer. If you remember, we, we, we went over that. He's a testator. He's the one that issues the testament. Testator represents the father. Number eight, the executor represents the believer or the father. The answer is believer. Believer. Remember, the Father gives the testament to the believer. It is the believer's job to execute it, to be ye doers, to execute the word of God. If you got both of those correct, please give yourself five points each. Number nine. In all you're getting, get understanding. Proverbs chapter four, verse seven reads, understand is a verb and defined as blank person present. The answer, third person present. Third person present. If you had that correct, five points. Number 10. Being a hearer only is likened to the servant in Matthew, according to chapter 24, verse 14 through 30. What did the master call that particular servant? He called the servant wicked and lazy the wicked and lazy servant so being a hearer of the word and not a doer 
is likened to a wicked and lazy servant who received but did not put it into work. If you got that correct, five points. If you didn't, simply correct it. Course number two. Course number two. Course number two, we focused on the sin nature, number one. The key word studied was sin. Strong's Greek Concordance, number 266, is A, hamardia, or B, klios, if you have hamardia, A. That's correct. Good job. Praise God. Number two. Sin is defined as A, being on target, B, missing the mark, or C, acting bad. The answer is B. B, missing the mark. Number three, Hamardia is a brand of sin that emphasizes its self-originated, self-empowered nature. True or false, the answer is true. Good job. Number four, Hamardia is originated and empowered by God. True or false, the answer, false. Hamardia was not originated and empowered by God. Hamardia was originated by the fall of man. So false is the answer to number four. Number five. When did sin originally come in? Sin originally came in in C when Adam and Eve hated the voice of the serpent. That is when sin originally came in. Number six. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 6 shows us when sin came in. It describes, number one, the serpent was more, this was fill in the blank, the serpent was more cunning, was the first answer of number six. The second answer, the serpent spoke to Eve. He talked to her. He spoke to her. So if you receive cunning and spoke, Give yourself 10 points. If you, only if you only got one answer correct, give yourself five points, but make sure you put in the correct answer. Number seven, whenever you hear someone, anyone question the word of God to bring an opposite, <clears throat> an opposite result, you know you are dealing with the cunningness of the serpent, true or false, the answer is true. Number eight, Give three examples of the serpent questioning God's word. Did God really say? Now, I'm not sure what you put down, my friends, but some of the responses could be, did God really say same-sex marriage is a sin? Did God really say Jesus is God? Did God really say Israel is God's chosen? We, during our course lesson, when we expounded on this, we gave some very specific examples, but I know during this quiz or during this final exam, I told you to use examples, not just in the past, but also in the present and not just biblically, but certainly what's taking place in our society today. So if you have an answer that's not here, but is related, it's in conjunction, it answers the question, give yourself five points. Number nine. The serpent sought to give man three things. We said to fill in the blank. What was the three things? Number one, its mindset. The serpent sought to give man its mindset. Number two, its desire. And number three, its fall. Those are the three things the serpent sought to give man. If you got that incorrect, please be sure to fill it in. The serpent sought to give man three things. Number one, it's mindset. Number two, it's desire. And number three, it's fall. And number 10, ultimately the serpent sought to destroy mankind, destroy the image of God and exalt itself as God. True or false? The answer is true. Excellent. Let's go to course three. Course three, we focused on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. And number one, I asked the question, did you read Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 through 17? Each and every one of you should have said yes. 
because we went over it and we read it together. If you tuned into our broadcast, whether live or archived for course three, you read it with me. So the answer would be yes. Um, the only way that you would put no is if you did not attend class or did not catch up on the archives and of course put no. Number two. Number two. The Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to A, tend and keep it, or B, buy and sell it. The answer, A, tend and keep it. Number three, when God speaks, it is a command, a decree, a requirement, true or false. The answer is true. It is absolutely true. When he speaks, it is a decree. Number five, his sayings, the Lord's, his sayings are completion. They are wholeness. They are fill in the blank. They are life. The answer to number five, life. This was in our study courses. Praise God. If you're getting these right answers, put five, give yourself five points for each. If they're incorrect, don't even be concerned about it. Don't you dare. Don't anybody dare beat themselves over. Don't you dare beat yourselves up over any wrong answer or incorrect. Don't you dare. I won't have it now. I won't have it. You correct it. You're doing an excellent job. I'm so happy for each and every one of you. Where are we at? Where are we at? All right. Number six, Genesis chapter two, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man. Commanded is defined in Strong's Concordance in the Hebraic transliteration as A, lava, B, kasoga, or C, sava. The answer is C, sava. Remember, it's spelled with that silent T. T-S-A-V-A, -A, the answer is C, Sava. Number seven, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil denotes experiencing and living a life void and without God. True or false? The answer, true. I put A, but it really should be true. True is the answer on that one. And number eight, self-empowerment is a fruit of the spirit. The answer, false. Oh no, it's, a, it's absolutely not. Self-empowerment is a fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Certainly not a fruit of the spirit. The answer is false for number eight. Number nine, before they ate, did Adam and Eve have a conscience of good and evil, yes or no? The answer is no. They did not have a conscience of good and evil. And number 10, list six fruits from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you remember, we did an illustration of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We put branches, we put fruits. Some of the fruits that we put were fear. Another one was anger, another murder, another selfish, adultery, lust, lying, depression, desperation, hate, guilt, stress, hopelessness, panic, shame, nakedness, anxiety, worry, self-effort, guilt, condemnation, grief. All of those are fruits of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you have some of those listed in number six, if you have if they or if they're if they if they go with what we studied give yourself five points if they don't if you didn't write them or if you didn't kind of maybe were a little off just fill it in the blank course four course four we focused on the walks not the walks excuse me the works of the flesh the works of the flesh number one Man is made up of three parts. Name the three parts. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the three parts are body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Number two, fill in the blank. As human beings, we live eternally as a spirit. We have to fill in the blank, remember? 
We live eternally as a spirit. We have a soul. And we live in a body. Those were the answers to the fill in the blank. As human beings, we live eternally as a spirit. Where am I at? I keep on. Here we go. We have a soul and we dwell in a body. Number three, works of the flesh requires practice, consistency, and execution. True or false? The answer is true. <clears throat> Number four, what must be renewed by the Holy Spirit? The body, the soul, or the spirit? The answer is soul. The soul must be renewed by the Holy Spirit. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Remember, when we studied Course 4, we broke down, we, we did a complete and thorough breakdown, the exegesis of, of the works of the flesh with regard to the triune part of man. And when it came to soul, we said that that was, or that includes the mind. It includes feelings and emotions and memory and conscience. The soul needs to be renewed by the Holy Spirit. Number five, what is brought under the subjection of the Holy Spirit? Body, soul, or spirit? The answer is the body. The body. The body is brought under the subjection of the Holy Spirit. He puts to death the deeds of the body, according to Romans chapter 7 and chapter 8. We gave you a ton of scripture during these courses for each one, each part of the triune man. Number five, uh, number six, what becomes born again? The body, the soul, or the spirit? The answer is the spirit. Oops. The answer is the spirit becomes born again. The spirit of a man becomes born again. Your soul cannot be born again. Your soul must be renewed. Your body does not become born again. Your body must be under the subjection of the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. Only thing that becomes born again is the spirit of a man. That's where it all starts. You can't even have your mind renewed unless you're born again by the Holy Spirit. You can't even have your body brought under the subjection of the power of God unless you are first born again of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is what becomes born again. Number seven, Galatians chapter five, verse 24. Fill in the blank. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If you got crucified, good job. It was supposed to be a two-part fill-in-the-blank, but I gave you the word flesh, not meaning to. So uh, crucified is the correct answer. If you did not get crucified, simply correct it. And if you did, give yourself five points. Number eight. The works of the flesh is practiced in a person who is A, saved, B, filled with the Holy Spirit, or C, not born again. The answer is C, not born again. Of course, the works of the flesh is constantly practiced in a person who is not born again. Course number five, going over final exam answers right now. If you're just tuning in, don't you dare look at the answers. Start from the beginning. The test is in the beginning. This is answers. Don't look at the answers. Please, come on. Can we just have some integrity here? If you're just tuning in, don't you dare. We have the final exam in the beginning of this broadcast. Check it out. Course number five. What is, now we focused on the redemption of Christ, part one, free from indwelling sin. Number one. What is a redemption of Christ? I wanted you to define it, to explain it, based on what we studied. You should have written the following, or at least come close to writing the following. 
The answer. Well, the question, what is the redemption of Christ? The answer. The redemption of Christ is the purchase or ransom of us who were slaves and in bondage to sin, bought back and returned to our original owner. That was exactly what we discuss and what was taught in course five with regard to the with regard to the question what is the redemption of Christ now if you remember course five it was up to you to take a lot of notes I said take notes for the first few courses I did a lot of board work and you guys kind of copied what I copied or what I wrote and then when we hit course four course five and six it was more, okay, students, you take notes. Be sure to take notes because there was a lot to discuss. This was a major part of our discussion. And there were certain points that I told you, be sure to write this down. That was one of them, okay? Number two, the word redeem. Redeem means A, to release, or B, to keep. The answer is A, to release. Redeem means to release. We were released from the clutches of sin, bought back to our original owner. We have been redeemed. The word redeem, to release. Praise God. Number three. Number three was a seven point answer, a seven part answer. And it was a fill in the blank. Number three, I asked a question, who is Jesus Christ based on what we studied? And we gave you seven points with definition. In this case, all I wanted was titles. And I asked you to fill in the blank. Number one, Jesus is the blank God, the mighty. You should have put mighty for number one. Jesus is the mighty God. Number two, Jesus is the light of the world. Light was the correct answer. Number three, according to John chapter 10, verse nine, Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. This was all in our study notes in course five. Number four, Jesus is the true vine. The true vine. Number five, Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd. Number six, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. The resurrection and and the life. Number seven. There was two parts to number seven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. Praise God. Anything that you need to correct, correct it now so that you could keep with you the notes that are corrected or in this case final exam. I'll tell you each and every one of the titles that you got correct. Give yourself five points. That's excellent. Now to course number six. Course number six, we started a question number one as follows. Name the three points. What we have been redeemed from. What Christ has redeemed us from. A, uh, now number one of question one. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. We have to fill in the blank. It said the blank of the law. It was the curse of the law. Number two of that first question, three points. It was a three-point question. Number two, the blank of our sin. Christ redeemed us from the guilt of our sin. Christ redeemed us from the guilt of our sin. And number three, still in question one, core six. Number three, the blank of sin. Jesus redeemed us from the power of sin. I'll tell you this. It's, it, I mean, that was just question number one. But if you got all three of those right, give yourself five points for each. That is fantastic. And if you didn't, put it in. Correct it. Get it in there. Get it in there. <coughs> Excuse me. Number two. Number two, we ask the question, is redemption for all or select few? And we said we spoke on two extremes. Name the two extremes. One of the extremes was universalism. Come on. The second one, Calvinism. We gave specific 
information on both extremes. Because the question was asked, is redemption for all or a select few? And we spoke on two extremes. These are the names of the two extremes. However, with that, and number three, we told you both extremes are error. They're not correct. They're doctrinally incorrect. They're damnable heresies. And we said, going now to question number three, what is the biblical answer to question number two? Give book, chapter, and verse. The biblical answer to number two, and again, the question in number two was, is redemption for all or select few? The biblical answer can be found in John chapter three, verse 16. If you wrote for question number three, if you answered it, John chapter three, verse 16, great job, good job, excellent job. Is redemption for all or select few? The answer is found in John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's whosoever shall believe in him. Whoever, whosoever is whosoever. Again, universalism teaches all will go to heaven no matter what. Whether they want to or not, whether they like God, whether they hate God, whether they blasphemed him, whether they've worshiped Satan, whether they died blaspheming the name of Jesus and they never want him to begin with, they will be forced to go to heaven and even Hitler will be there sitting at the Lamb's table and that is heresy. And then Calvinism teaches on limited atonement. They teach on a pre-selection that only a few are saved and even that the blood of Jesus didn't atone for all mankind, which is complete heresy and indoctrinal, indoctrinally incorrect. The answer again to number three, with regards to number two, John chapter three, verse 16. Last, but certainly not least, question number four, the five results of our redemption. It was a five part answer. The results, the benefits, the blessings of our redemption in Christ. I asked you to please complete the word in this final exam. I started off the word. I gave you definition. Let's go over it. Number one, the word you should have wrote, expiation. Expiation. This is one of the blessings, the benefits, the results of redemption. Expiation, meaning the removal of our sin and guilt. Expiation. If you have that correct, give yourself 10 full points. 10 points for that one if you got it correct. If you didn't, correct it. Just put in the right answer. Number two. Number two, propitiation. Filled in, you had to fill, you had to complete the rest of the word. I started off with P-R-O. The completion is propitiation. Means to re the removal of God's wrath. Awesome benefit of redemption. Come on. That, that's priceless. That's gold. I can't even say gold because we walk on, on, on the streets of gold in heaven. It's beyond gold. It's holy. It's just God. Thank you, Lord. Propitiation, meaning the removal of God's wrath. Thank you, Jesus. Three. Number three. We started off, we gave you RE. We told you the definition means the removal of our alienation from God reconciliation is the word reconciliation give yourself listen each and every one that you have correct in this question number four ten full points ten full point I could easily double it because this is fantastic if you got this correct ten full points for each word you have correct number four filled you needed to fill in the completion of this sentence we started off by giving you defeat of the Defeat of the, you should have wrote, powers of darkness. Powers of darkness. He disarmed the rulers and authorities, making an open show of them. We covered this in course number four, and we told you that this is another benefit, another blessing of the redemption of Christ, that the Lord defeated the powers of darkness on our behalf. If you got that correct, give yourself 10 extra points. And last but certainly not least, we gave you, we started off the word sub- Definition, he died in our place, the word substitute. If you put substitution, that's fine as well. Either one, 
gives you 10 points. Don't give, don't put, you know, if you put two, it's still one 10 points, okay? Don't give yourself 20 points for this one. Uh, substitute or substitution, one or the other is absolutely fine. It is correct. An awesome benefit, an awesome result of redemption is that the Lord was our substitute. He died in our place. My friends, this was a powerful session that we completed. We started off, oh, what was it, over eight weeks ago. You just completed the very first session one of the Moab Biblical Classes. Can we just glory to be to God? Thank you, Lord. Give yourself a hand clap. We, I'm going to tell you something. We covered a lot in the past few weeks. <sighs> And I'm just happy. I'm, 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 I'm so excited that you did such a good job. If you hear that in the background, uh, just, just pardon that noise, pardon that noise. But I'm just excited for you. I'm happy for you. You've completed the session one. That was uh, seven or well, eight courses when you include final exam. And uh, what I want to do is this. I want to offer a certificate of completion to those of you that completed all the courses and you took the final exam and maybe you weren't there live. Maybe you had to, you know, you had to come back and it was archived, but you were faithful, you were diligent, you were being a student of God's word and you went back and you really, you tuned in and you listened to it from beginning to end, all courses. If you are interested in receiving a certificate of completion, here's what I want you to do. I want you to first make sure that you have watched the entirety of all the classes. If you missed one class, but you still took the final today and you did great, that's fine. But if you missed one class, I need for you, you need to complete the class. I cannot give out any certificates of completion. Now some may ask, and I hope not, but you know, you never know. Somebody may ask, well, how would you know? If somebody completed it or not what if somebody said they did when they did it that's not my issue I, you know I'm I'm trusting that we are there's integrity in this place and that uh, you know to me the word of a man or a woman or young man young woman uh, you know to me that's priceless to me it, it still means something so if you tell me uh, you know what, I, I, I was there, I tuned into all the classes, and I would love to receive a certificate of completion. I'm going to take you at your word. I'm not going to question you on it. I, I frankly, I don't even know if, even if I did have the time to question you, I probably, I know I wouldn't, because if you tell me that you did something and you are a believer in Christ, uh, I'm, I'm going to take you at your word for it. And uh, God forbid, if anybody says that they did do it and they didn't, then the Lord will you know, there'll be conviction there. So I'm not going to be too concerned. I pray for that person because I don't, you know, they have to be concerned on that because you're not lying to me. You'd be lying to the Holy Spirit. So, but if you did complete all courses, what I want you to do again, to receive a certificate of completion, make sure first and foremost, you have watched the entirety of all the classes. If you have not watched the entirety of all the classes, you took the final exam with me today, but you know you still have to catch up on a couple of classes you did not do, you need to. In order for me to send out the certificates of completion, if you email me and you say, I did not catch up on it, I would like a completion certificate and I promise I will, I'm not gonna send it out. It has to be completed. I'd be more than happy to send it out a week from now, two weeks from now, a month from now, that's fine, but just let me know that you completed it so I can, let, so I can do it that way, okay? If you are there already, all classes are completed from beginning to end, not just for five minutes. I mean, literally completing the classes from beginning to end. You did that and you did the final exam and you're completed. You have completed session one of all seven courses and you want to receive a certificate of completion. Email me, anita at emoaf.org. Anita at E-M-O-A-F dot O-R-G. Now, this is what I want you to put in the body of the email. I want you to put the following. Write the following. Write this down. When you email me, I want you to write the following. I, and then put your full name, 
first last name, whatever name you'd like to be on the certificate, I, your full name, have completed all seven courses of session one and the final exam. Please send me a certificate of completion. That's all I need in the body of the email, but it has to be that. It has to be that. If anybody emails me, not you, but anyone outside of today's classes or those who may be archiving, um, if they, if I get an email and, and, and someone says, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, are we going to give out, are you guys going to give out certificates? That tells me they didn't even tune into final exam. So I won't even, I won't even answer the email. Um, so the email has to be written as follows. Okay. I'll repeat it one more time. I, your full name, have completed all seven courses of session one and the final exam. Please send me a certificate of completion you don't have to receive a certificate of completion it's just being offered it's a i'll tell you what it's pretty neat you you want to receive something i mean that's this is a big deal what you just covered um you know or i should say what you what you learned you know there's nothing wrong with having a certificate of completion if you really worked hard at it and studied receive one we'll email it's going to be emailed if somebody actually wants if anybody's tuning in you actually want an actual hard copy of a certificate of completion. We don't have that available and if we did, we may have to charge for it. So, because it does require handling and shipping and all that, but I mean, maybe we'll offer it, we'll, we'll see. But right now, as it stands, it will be emailed and there is no, you know, charge or anything like that. And we could just ship it out via email. And you could open up, it, you could open it up in an attachment and print it out on your own. But if we do do a hard copy, it would probably have an actual gold symbol um certifying it's an actual certified copy of the certificate of completion so but again we don't have that right now we we've been considering it and if we do we'll be sure to let you guys know okay all right class is dismissed listen there will be session two brand new session we, again we just completed seven courses of session one now we're going to start on a whole new course, a whole new session, session two, which will probably be another seven courses. We'll see. Session two, stay tuned for the title. I won't give it to you right now, but I will release it. So be sure to check back sometime this week, early next week. It'll be on our, um, on our website. Uh, and you'll see the new session and the date that will start. Okay, let's end this class in prayer. Father, we are so grateful for your time with us. Oh, Father, thank you for being with us and showering your favor and your love and your grace upon us, oh Lord. Father, thank you for teaching us during these courses, during the completion of session one. This is, I'm just ecstatic for all those who are receiving the knowledge of your truth, the knowledge of your word by the Holy Spirit. And Father, we look forward to session two with the next set of courses. Until that time, we ask that you bless us, you keep us, you continue to make your face to shine upon us, continue to be gracious unto us, and continue to give us your peace. Oh, Father, we praise you. We call you holy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> Oh, praise God, my friends. All right, like I said, stay tuned. Be sure to check up on our website, www.openyoureyespeople.com, or I'll give you another web address, same website, shorter web address, www.emoaf.org, E-M-O-A-F.org, emoaf.org. If you are just tuning in and you missed the final exam, it will be archived immediately after this broadcast. Um... Also, please join me 
tonight, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We will be have we will be having open your eyes, people. Breaking news, where we will be bringing you breaking news, world headlines, matching Bible prophecy, and you can tune in onto our website and see it live, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, I want to say thank you so much. Congratulations. God richly bless you in Jesus' name.